working uh, with the ink, I have, um, if you look over here, I've got a lot of stuff out to um, show you all that you can use uh, when working with ink. It's, it's a really fun medium uh, to, to work with. And uh, it was one of the, whoa, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, it's one of the ones that whenever I start, I learned how to work with ink in drawing class, it um, kind of bridged two of my loves, painting and drawing, into um, a, a singular medium. And so I really uh, like working with it. So I have a few different types of paper to show you. Um, this big piece is watercolor paper. And I don't know how good this camera is, but... Um, you should be able to see it's really thick and the edges you can almost see it almost looks like fabric and that's because watercolor paper has cotton in it so it doesn't disintegrate and uh, so where drawing paper is made from uh, wood pulp and it will disintegrate but it can take some wet media as well so if you just have drawing paper you'll be fine but if you do have watercolor mixed media paper and um, it works really well with these techniques because it's more absorbent and it won't wrinkle as much as the uh, drawing paper. And then I have, uh, this is a sketchbook that I've done all sorts of watercolor and ink um, drawings um, in over the last um, several um, months. I usually have three or four sketchbooks that um, I'm working in um, at a time, and I'll do watercolor, acrylic, um, all sorts of uh, different things. Sometimes even if I work on other pieces of paper, uh, collage, this is all India ink here. So a lot of times I just use the sketchbooks to work out different um, ideas. There's one. But most of these are just India ink. Uh, this was kind of a fun self-portrait I did. Um, I think it was maybe in um, March, and I, I was um, in a room and I could the doorknob was close to me and I could see my face in it. So I did like an ink study of the doorknob with the self-portrait sort of in it. So you can use ink in your sketchbooks too, depending on the quality of paper that you have. And then you can even find, this is a sketchbook I got on um, Amazon that has uh, watercolor paper in it and it's sort of these landscape uh, compositions so I think it's meant to work more outside drawing landscapes but I just thought it would be fun uh, to do different wet media sort of stuff in so you can find entire sketchbooks made just of watercolor paper if you really like working uh, with ink or watercolor paper more. Alright so uh, the uh, traditional ink that I have, I'm gonna go and show you that first. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. So this is a bottle of ink I got at that store called um, Daiso. It's like a Japanese dollar store, but you can find the same product on Amazon as well, or Michael's, they sell little smaller drop, like little dropper bottles that are a little more expensive. This was only a few dollars, where for a small bottle at a lot of the retailer stores, they're um, like eight or nine dollars uh, so you can kind of shop around but this one will last a really long time because you don't really have to use a lot of ink it goes a really long way and then this one it has like a if you open it it has like a little it looks like you can control the drops that kind of scared scares me though because uh, I, I don't know how easy it is to control it so I always have like a whoops a medicine dropper. This is just from some old like medicine like drop that has a little dropper in it. So I always have that handy so that I have a dropper to use to be a little bit um, more precise uh, when I'm working. And then um, I always have water nearby because of course it's ink and you want to you need to have water to dilute it. And I found these little this like um, ice cream brand they, they have these plastic containers, and I don't eat a lot of ice cream, but I like these containers a lot for water. 
And um, even if I'm using like liquid watercolor, they have lids that screw on. And so I kind of like that because one, I'm clumsy and I'm always knocking stuff over. So if I'm not using it at the time, I can put a lid on it. But also if I mix up like a liquid, um, a liquid wash that I want to keep using, I can save it. So I always have a cup of water uh, to work with and then a variety of other tools to, um, to use. And then some more recent things that I found that I really like using that make it a little easier. And this is one of the options that I was going to share uh, with you all is if you don't really want to be messy at home, you can actually find on Amazon and at, at most of the craft stores now, you can actually find India ink pens that are brush pens that already have the ink in them. Um, these ones are, are great. I got these on Amazon. Um, the only problem with these is you can't really refill them. Um, I've tried and it always ends up making a mess and then they leak after that. You can see they're, they're still, it's kind of like if you break the seal on them, they're not 100% um, um, clean anymore. But they, these are pens that have the Indian ink in them and you can get different tips. Like that's why they have different color caps and then the ink is inside of the brush. Most of these I've used uh, completely, but normally you would just squeeze the brush and it would make the ink come out uh, onto the, the brush. And usually you can see it kind of loading um, here into it. And then they do make a gray one. So this one is gray, but I, I've used most of these up and you can't really refill them, but I don't ever throw anything away. I'm like, well, I could use them. Maybe I'll figure out a way to inject some ink into them or not. But then I found uh, this one and it's like a really nice, super hard plastic, almost feels like, um, like it's made of um, stone or something. But when you open this one up, it's, it's like a fountain pen that has uh, a brush tip and it's got an ink cartridge in it. And this one, I, I didn't change it the other day because I wanted to show you how you do it. You can buy these little cartridges of India ink and for a pack of 12 of these cartridges, it's like under $10. And I think this pen was $7 on Amazon and it's probably my favorite drawing tool right now but uh, these packages have the little cartridges in them and they're plastic so it's all recyclable if you are worried about mess and to me this is less weight less waste than you know uh, buying those ones that you have to throw away or mixing a lot of it but you can see it empties all the way out so you're not you it doesn't waste any ink at all and then you take the new cartridge, put it in here, and then screw the cap back on, and it will pop the cartridge. It usually takes a minute, but then you'll start to see the ink um, flowing more solidly. And then, of course, while it's wet, you could use a brush and water to go back and um, blend different values if you want, or just use the black ink as a drawing tool. But I really like, uh, this is probably one of my favorite uh, tools right now to, to use. So there are some a little bit cleaner things. Another thing that I have that I was gonna show you is you can find, these are a grayscale um, marker set, and Prismacolor makes this, Windsor Newton, uh, makes this and this is a brand called um, Arteza and so inside are 36 different values of gray and from basically from the lightest gray all the way to black and so you can do value studies with um, these and actually blend them and they're not they're not India ink I think these are are alcohol based markers but they're really fun to work with. And I actually did a, I did a value study the other day with um, these, just trying them out. So this little value study I did of this like barbed wire, uh, that was using uh, those markers. And I think that, I think that's the only time I've used them so far, but they're pretty fun and like I used probably six different values working on this and um, I thought that they blended really nicely. 
so um, there's there's those two, and they weren't terribly um, expensive because um, I don't think I would have bought them if they if they were. So lots of options uh, to uh, to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to mix a different uh, different values of the ink to work more traditionally. Now there are trays, little palettes uh, that you can use. Uh, to mix your values in. These kind of palettes are for watercolor or any liquid medium. A lot of times I see students using these for mixing acrylic and oil paints, but these little wells are actually for to hold the liquid. So anytime you use oil or acrylic, you, you want to use a flat palette so you can really mix the colors. So these are meant to hold a fluid, and these are watercolor that I've put in this palette before. And since it's dry, I can always go back and wet the watercolor and reuse it. Um, but if you don't have one of these, um, they do, they're pretty inexpensive at the store. You can usually get a set of them. But what I found that's even easier, and also, you know, recycling or repurposing, is this one egg company, I think there's a few, have these really heavy-duty egg cartons. And so I've been asking my friends and family that use these, this brand of eggs if I can have their egg cartons. And then I cut them up and usually bring them up to the school for students to use because these are really heavy duty plastic. And basically, I've got uh, 24 little wells that I could put watercolor or ink into. So I'm always looking for different ways. You could also use like an ice tray if you have an ice tray that you're not using. Uh, but you never would want to use it for like actual um, ice again, probably uh, after this. I don't think the ink is poisonous. But um, I still probably wouldn't put it in, in, you know, or eat or drink out of anything that I used it in. So uh, what I'm going to do is put the ink. I'm going to put some of this ink in this little uh, dropper just so it's easier to control. And I usually shake it up a little bit because sometimes there is uh, some sediment. Okay, so I just filled this little squirt bottle up, uh, or this little dropper bottle up with the with the ink. And like I said, if you go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby to get your ink, they tend to come in a little container, kind of like this. It's not glass, but it is plastic. And so what I'm going to do is is um, suck some of the ink up into this dropper, and then I'm going to just put one drop in this first little well and then gradually add more drops as I go along. So I'm gonna put one little drop here, three drops in there, that was five. Count it eight. So you just wanna make sure you're gradually adding um, more. And then for the very last one, I'm just going to fill it with quite a bit of ink so that I have a well of just black ink uh, to work with. But you can see I'm not using a lot of ink at all because it really is going to go a, a long way. So uh, I have it in the well, and you can see gradually there's more and more ink. So now what I'm going to do is uh, fill these with water all to the same point. So I can see there's, um, I'm, I can kind of measure, and I'm just gonna pour water and try to fill them all up to the same level, or as close as possible. And you could use a dropper with the water as well to be really precise. Oh, and the last one is just black ink. You, the thing is, you have to fill them all to the same level so that it dilutes the ink um, accurately. All right, and then I usually just take a stick of some sort or like the back end of a paintbrush 
and then I'll stir the ink just to make sure it's all mixed together well. And then I always go from the lightest one to the darkest one. All right, so now I should have a nice range of um, values. And so I'm gonna put those onto the paper here so you can see them. So if I were to sketch out um, a drawing of some sort to, to use ink and, and do a value uh, study, I would always start with the lightest values and then work up to the darkest values because you can always make it darker, but since this ink is a stain, you can't make it light again. Now, you may wonder, well, what if I accidentally get it on the paper somewhere I don't want it? Well, there are things you can use called resist that will resist the ink from absorbing in that area, and I'll show you some of those um, today as well. I don't have all of them at home, but um, I can show you examples of it in, in, um, online. So I'm going to start with this, and you have to do each one at a time and then let it dry. So when I use India ink, I'll do the lighter values, blow dry it, or come back later when it's dry, because if you put the wet next to the wet, it's going to blend together. So here is the lightest value. And you can see um, it's really a nice light gray. And then I'm going to go into the next one. And you can see just a couple of drops more, it's a lot darker. And then here, these are a few more drops. And you can see how, just like when we did our value studies, the ink is gradually getting darker and darker. I think I may have done this in one that time, but oh well. And then this is just the straight black ink. So you can see how you create a nice um, range of value. So if you were to do a value study with these, you would start with the light ones, put those where those light values go, let it dry, then do the next darker one, and so on and so forth. And I would do my underdrawing, if you had to do a gesture, I would do it in really light pencil. And uh, that way, hopefully you won't see it, but even if you do, you might be able to go back and erase it if it's in um, pencil. So um, that's how you create the, the range of, of values. Now, uh, another, I'll show you some other techniques that you can use. Uh, one is you don't always have to use a brush. There are different brushes that you can use for sure. So there's the more uh, traditional um, brushes that you can try making um, you know, marks with. Uh, so there's some fun expressive things you can do. Um, of course, there's like the thinner, like watercolor brushes that are gonna make finer marks. So you'll, you can choose whatever tool that you uh, want to uh, work with. Um, this is a um, brush that I've been using a lot lately with the other brush pens that I've had. But this one you can actually fill with water and I have another cup of clean water here. But these brushes, you can put them in the water, and, and, or you can fill them up at the sink, or you can just squeeze it while it's in the water, and it sucks the water into the base of the brush. And then you can come back with the ink, and if it's still wet, you can actually blend it together and, this, and use it with watercolor. Um, as well. So there's lots of different brushes um, that you that you can use. And then um, I'll show you, this is a technique called um, wet on wet, where you take and wet the paper with a brush or spray. So I'm really saturating the paper. And then I'm going to take a brush and dip it into the ink. Make sure you can see. And then where it's wet, wherever I touch that ink, do you see how it just bleeds out? 
So that's the technique called wet on wet because you can create like a really fun um, expressive sort of marks where the ink just kind of runs and does really fun things. So uh, that's that's a technique called um, wet on wet. And if you're wanting to create like um, a range of value, you can take uh, your brush and make a, a mark of ink and then add it to water and then try to get most of it out and then do that again and then rinse it in the water and then do that again. We call that a gradiated wash. It will blend and it's probably not going to be super smooth, but if you just keep doing that, it's going to slowly just keep diluting the ink and you'll, you can create a range of value that way too. So if you ever have, if, you, if all your values are not really separated and you had to create a gradation, that's how, how you can um, do that. And then, of course, there's all sorts of drawing tools. So there are those quills and nibs that you can buy, the old-fashioned um, way of where they would dip it in the ink and feathers and stuff. And I have all that stuff at the school, but unfortunately, um, since it's closed, I don't have it all with me. But I have some other things I like to use. This is just a chopstick, and it's bamboo, and so it's pretty absorbent. So I can dip the chopstick into the ink, and you can see I can make quite a few. Let me take the camera a little bit. <laughs> I need to get a better camera. But you can see I'm I'm just dipping the the brush um, in the ink. I mean the the um, chopstick in the ink, and I can draw with it for quite a while before it really runs out. Um, same thing, this is just like a little twig that I got from outside. And because it's wood, it's somewhat absorbent, but because it's not perfect, it kind of makes more irregular looking lines. So you'd be surprised, like you may experiment with different tools and see whatever it is you want to draw, you may be able to find more expressive ways of, of making marks. Um, another fun technique you can do is take a little bit of ink and then put just like a drop onto the paper. And then you can take a straw and blow the ink around, and it will create these like spider web looking veins. So I don't know if you can see that really well. So that's kind of fun to uh, do with kids, so you know, to keep them busy um, having them blow it around. And then it kind of ends up looking like sea branches once you do that. So all these expressive techniques, you don't have to do any of these, but I did want you to see all the, the range of possibilities that you can get from this little bottle of ink. And I hardly use any ink to create all the different values that, that I have here. And uh, then to, I think someone had some background noise coming through their mic, so if you'll mute it, um, if you don't mind. So uh, for resisting, one thing you can use is wax. So if you have like those little tea candles that are clear or um, crayons, like a white crayon, that's one way you can keep your paper clean. And so wherever you don't want the paper to have ink, you could color it in with a crayon. Now, you can't get the crayon off, but you really won't be able to see it if your paper is white. And then you can use color crayons, too, because those colors showing through the ink look kind of fun. But you put the, the crayon down, that seals the paper, and so it, res it resists the ink in, in that area. So now I'm going to take a brush with some ink, and when I go over, that area, you'll see that it's not absorbing where I put that crayon. And once it's completely dry, then I can go back and buff it with a paper towel 
and those colors will look even more clean. You can use um, a, like a tea candle to do that or a crayon, a light color crayon um, if you want to. Uh, there's also a uh, rubber cement can be used to do that and a material called um, Triscuit or masking fluid. It's like a liquid latex that you can paint on your paper, let it dry and then paint over it and then you peel it off and it leaves like your paper uh, perfectly clean. So there's a lot of this that you can use uh, with, with that. And then I have um, some salt here and this is just some bigger crystals and then some finer uh, salt. And you can put ink down onto your paper and while it's wet it does have to be wet you can put salt on top of it and sometimes i'll mix it up if i want variety and then while it, you have to leave it there while it's drying and after you know a few hours when it's completely uh, dry then you can dust the salt off and it will leave this really grainy texture and so a lot of landscape painters that like to work with ink and watercolor they will um, do this for like areas up close in the foreground to kind of mimic the texture of the earth and uh, for the ground. So there's a lot of really fun uh, techniques that you can do. And then um, this is an old tish, so you probably don't want to use a toothbrush that you've used before, but you can use a toothbrush to create a sort of spray paint like effect. You dip it into the ink. Now remember, this is a stain. So um, if you don't have a glove on, it's probably going to stain your thumb uh, to do this. So just be careful. Luckily, this is the only job I have right now, so I don't have to wait tables anymore. When I used to wait tables, I would always have customers say, you know, can you go wash your hands? Because I was an art major and I always had um, stuff on my hands. But you can see as I flick the bristles of the brush towards the paper, it creates a sort of spray paint-like effect. Do you see? That and so the more the more that I do that, the darker it gets. And so it's almost like stippling, but um, you know a lot faster. Now you could also do this uh, with a stencil and, uh, and and create a stencil. And I have one here. This is just a little Halloween like skeleton thing. Uh, but you could put a stencil down. And flick the ink on. It's up to you how much you want to do. And look the stencil up, and then you've got you know, a like a little skull or whatever you know stencil that you want to uh, use so ink is very versatile there's all sorts of things uh, that you can do with it um, i've even got a thing here this is a kid's like bubble like bubbles thing and you can add ink to bubble solution and then blow it out onto the paper and it will create these big bubbles i i can't do that right now because i've got so much stuff out on my table, but I can show you what it looks like. One second. So um, this is from when I did this last semester. So those bubbles that you see there, that's what happens when those bubbles with ink land on the paper. They pop and then they end up looking like, um, almost like sea life. It's pretty cool. So it is really messy though, because you can't always control where the bubbles are going to go. But um, I've run out of paper here, and I've got a lot of other stuff out on my table that I don't want to ruin. So uh, do that at your, you know, your own risk. But I think that's most of the techniques. Oh, there's one more thing I was going to show you. So if you have um, just like rubbing alcohol um, at home, I know that's kind of a uh, something a lot of people are looking for now because of the the virus, so I'm not going to use a lot of it, just a, a tiny bit. I'm going to put some in a little, the cap, 
And then if you, oops. I'm gonna take a, a Q-tip and then I'm gonna, you have to do this one pretty quick. So I'm gonna put some ink down and then I'm gonna take some of the alcohol and drop it and drop it onto that area of the wet ink. And you can see it almost creates the opposite effect as the wet on wet. So this, it pushes the ink away. And it's a chemical process. I can't think of what it's called. But it almost looks like an acid wash sort of uh, effect once it dries. It, it just kind of pushes the ink away. So there's a lot of cool textures and things that you can create uh, with uh, the ink. So I hope you have fun experimenting with it. And again, you can draw whatever you want. You don't have to use any of these if you'd rather uh, stick with, you know, a, a the the ink pens, or um, I just want you to use ink in, in some way. Now, um, I do have some watercolors because the cool thing about ink is once the ink dries, it's permanent. And so you could go back over it with watercolor and uh, it's not going to mess with the ink. And so watercolor always stays water soluble where the ink, once it dries, it's not water soluble anymore. And so if you want to use color, I might use go back with watercolor and I use the ink. This is a set of watercolors that I've been using quite a bit lately that I got on Amazon. And I think it was about $15, but it has 42 different colors and it opens up kind of like a, a Swiss army knife uh, with all these colors. And then it comes with one of those brushes that I told you about. And the colors are really real pigments. Um, I think it says from Italy and they're light fast and says, say that they won't fade. So, and it's a really cool little set. And I actually gave these to my nieces for um, Christmas, I think it was uh, last year. And um, so they make a good little traveling watercolor set um, if, you, if you want one. And then of course, like even like the, you know, kids' watercolors, those work fine too. The only thing sometimes maybe the pigments may not uh, last as long. They could, you know, possibly fade. And so that's why some, usually if watercolors are cheap, that's, that's what it is, is the pigments will fade um, over time. And then there's the more traditional watercolor sets that look like this, and they come in tubes. And then you put the watercolor out on palettes, and then, of course, you can re-wet those and mix those colors um, together. So I use both. Um, I even use gouache, which is an opaque watercolor, uh, sometimes when I'm working with it. And then there are uh, watercolor pencils that could be used, too. So if you want like a nice bridge of working with dry media and um, wet media at the same time, these are pencils that you can draw with. Let me show you. This is the Prismacolor brand, but with these you can draw with the pencil. And I'm going to take this little brush that had water in it, and then you can see you can go back over the pencil and it blends to make watercolor. So it's kind of a fun tool to have. And since the ink, like I said, is waterproof, you can see I'm making a wash and putting it over the ink, and it's not messing with the ink at all. So that's one of the fun things about um, working with ink, is if you do your initial drawing with the ink, you could use watercolor or markers or whatever on top of it, and it's not going to mess with the ink. And I think that's pretty much it. And then I have some, these are some of the acrylic inks that I was telling you about that uh, you might be interested in. They don't do all the same stuff that the traditional ink does, but if you like, if you like these ink techniques and this kind of fluid consistency, you can find uh, acrylic fluid um, inks like this that you can use on paper as well. And this is a brand I really like. It's called Dr. Martin's, kind of like the shoes. 
but they come in all sorts of colors. And these are permanent um, acrylic inks that you can use on paper or um, on canvas. And then there is kind of a cheaper uh, kids version that you can do as well that they call liquid watercolor. Um, the only thing with these, I've even gotten the artist grade one before, and they do fade. And when I say fade, like they within uh, just a few months. And so I would be careful, you know, with any uh, liquid material like this that you get, make sure that it says light fast and uh, that it says uh, fade resistant uh, so that it doesn't fade. You could always put a UV um, protectant spray on it, but sometimes it's the actual chemicals and the pigment, they just don't last um, very long. And so it will look really colorful at first, but then over time it will start to look really pastel and then just kind of fade, fade away completely. So these are, these are, I think are mostly for kids. They're, they're washable and you can find them at Michael's. Um, this was from that online company, Dick Blick. But these um, you can put just like the ink into a palette. They're pretty um, pigmented, but it's basically just like a watercolor that's already uh, liquid, so you don't have to mix it at all. And it's pretty concentrated, so you can even dilute it to create different washes or, or values um, as well. So uh, lots of fun stuff that you can do. Um, I know sometimes I have students, they're like, you just blew my mind and now there's so many options I have no idea <laughs> what to do now. So um, I, I'm sorry if, if that happens, but hopefully as you process it, you'll start to generate ideas and you'll come up with concepts and things that you uh, may want to do. But you can see, um, I wanna hold the camera closer. You can see I have all these techniques that I just did. And then look at all the ink that I still have left. Like I barely used any of it. So it really just takes a couple of drops and you can do all sorts of things, okay? So um, think about whatever you wanna do. You don't have to use any of these techniques. I just wanted to show you how to create the, the range of, of values. So if you wanted to do something more observational, maybe you could try your still life setup in ink and do a value study that way if you don't really have a creative idea in mind. Or maybe you, you know, like to design your own characters or you like to you know paint landscapes or whatever you may want to use some of these other techniques and try a landscape using um, ink um, or you know if you want to keep it clean and messy maybe you can find um, one of these ink pens or um, even try using like those grayscale markers but you can add color to these too so you could integrate uh, watercolor um, into this as well as other uh, drawing media. So once this ink dries and even watercolor, once it dries, you can, you'll still have the texture of the paper. So you'll be able to go back and um, add drawing media on top of it. So um, that, that's kind of fun sometimes to do uh, mixed media. Maybe you do watercolor ink washes and then you draw with like pen and ink 